going to move on now and talk about, as you mentioned in there, Everton's third hearing and, and, and potential sales actually that could, could come in the summer. Now, of course, there's the ongoing dispute, six and a half million pounds for the stadium interest. What do you make of this, Keith, and a potential third hearing? Well, the third hearing is focusing on what now appears to be the Premier League arguing against auditors because uh, Everton's auditors have approved uh, these t- these actual the 6.6 interest payments to be capitalised, which means they should therefore count as stadium costs and should not be counted for PSR. So the Premier League are now into the realms of becoming you know arbiters about accounting rules. Uh, which I find very strange, again, that they're going to this level to fight somebody. You'd have thought it would have been resolved in this last hearing. It's, it's a, it should be a fairly black and white issue. And if there was arguments to be made, make them and then make a decision. To have it dragging on is ludicrous. It could go as far from what I'm reading, my own assessment of it, it could go as far as another th- two to three points, uh, which is, you know, obviously, I don't think it will go that far. But that's the the real downside for Everton if they were to have be stopped all the different interest payment deductions. But how the Premier League can argue now against auditors um, is just, you know, we're now in the realms of strange stuff where, you know, as we say, tables are now being decided, not just by KCs and lawyers, but now by the accountants. And it's just, it's getting out of control. Is the, and, and would that then mean, Keith, would the points deduction, if it was to happen, would that then come next season? Would it happen like literally at the end of this season? Where would you see this whole sort of case playing out? Well, again, quite strangely, they've said they've uh, moved away from the standard directions is what they call the timetable that they've set to resolve this. And I think it will be next season is what we're talking about. So probably at the start of next season and then a judgment probably before Christmas is what I would expect them to do. Um but again, you know, have this hanging over us now is, again, it's just a cloud that won't move away. Is there now a concern as well that not only, you know, you finish off this season, you get through the two breaches, you go into next season, you could start the season on minus points. How will that affect, do you think, the fans and the club alike it, going through this whole process that, as you said, has really been a black cloud over the club? Well, I've got to hope that uh, in the off-season and in the, the next Premier League summer meeting, that there really is a come to Jesus meeting with the clubs and that there is some sort of amnesty called and new rules are put in place or at least a temporary set of new rules until some things can be worked out. So I'm hoping that may be the way forward. Of course, whether that includes Chelsea amnesty and Man City amnesty, that will raise so many questions as well. Um, But yes, of course, uh, the fans, if if it does come to pass that there is a points deduction to start from, I mean, that would be be mind-blowing but it's better than having it at the start of the season rather the end of the season but this system isn't working and on that note Keith I know we've discussed in previous weeks about potentially Everton having to sell players before that sort of pre-deadline June 30th date that they've sort of set do you think that that will then play into it are Everton now even more likely to sell because of this issue that's going on with the potential third hearing there seems to be no doubt at all that Everton are going to have to sell. Otherwise, we're going to be in a spiral of being fined every single season going forward uh, because they just can't escape from the, from where the numbers sit at the moment. So, yes, I think there's going to have to be at least two big sales, something close to £100 million to get us back into some sort of uh, operating situation. Probably Branthwaite and Anana seem to be the two that uh, would be looking to go. Uh, that's where the value will be. And... It's it's a shame it's come to that, but there we go. Everton will have to fix it long term. I say otherwise, you and I are going to be talking every week for the next few years about points <laughs> deductions. And do you think the club are like you know are other clubs going to be fully aware of Everton's situation and lowball them? So I know you've discussed in, in previous weeks, Keith. You think that Branthwaite was worth upwards of seventy to hundred million pounds, and Nana's worth you know fifty, sixty, seventy million pounds. If we know that Everton might be going through a third PSR breach, would that therefore mean that clubs could come in and say, actually, I won't, I will only offer 40 million for Branthway, or will Everton stand firm in their valuation? Well, I've done probably over 200 transfers in my time in football. And whenever you've got a real auction, which is what you're always trying to hope for, is having you know three, four, five clubs interested, then they can't lowball you because you've got a chance to really be a strong seller. And I think in this case, there will be enough interest from enough high quality clubs that both of them won't be done in a fire sale. So I think we'll get reasonably good value for both of them. And uh, 
they're both at the right age. They're both young. They're both talented. They're both internationals now. Great. So I think Everton's at least in a good position to salvage that. Now, what it does to the squad, though, of course, is uh, is pretty tragic. But we've got to start again. We've got Branthwaite for a million. So let's hope we can find another gem at some stage going forward. And would you hope for, you know, 100 million plus? We're we looking at, say, 80 million for Branthwaite and 60 for Anana, 140 million total. Would, that, would you regard that as success then for the team? I think it would be success in terms of uh, trying to once and for all put this PSR issue to bed. We're then going to have the uh, the new stadium opening up the season after next, and then that you know increases the revenue numbers, and that should make us pretty safe in terms of those things going forward. So it is going to be navigating our way through not only this PSR issue, but also the big cloud of the ownership issue, which has not been resolved either. Mm. And. We'll come to that in just a second, but in terms of the actual players, would you be disappointed if Onana ends up going to West Ham and, and say Brandweight does go to the likes of a Newcastle? You know, if they're going to a Premier League rival team, given Everton's position at the moment with relegation, would you rather them sell overseas to a European team or an international team? Or actually, are you OK selling within the Premier League? No, I definitely prefer to try and sell them overseas if you can do. It's always horrible to see a player come back to haunt you at some stage. And uh, particularly if they've uh, been a great, uh, you know, performer for the club. Certainly in Branthwaite's uh, case, that is the case. He's been a, a very great asset. He's come through the ranks in many ways, as well as being on loan. But uh, Onana, I think, will go overseas. I'm pretty sure Branthwaite may well do as well. I, I could still see him ending up in Spain. And in terms of the of the ownership, Keith, how are you feeling about that whole scenario? And where do you now see this playing out with 777 Partners? For crying out loud, Premier League, make a decision. <laughs> How many times have we said it now? It's it's absolutely amazing. They're supposed to have set, um, you know, four conditions for this to go through. Have they met them or not? Is there a time deadline? We just don't know. Uh, there's rumours again circulating of now of two, maybe three or four even potential buyers coming in. Uh, everybody seems to want that stadium as an asset and then lease it back to the club. And that may be the solution for Everton going forward. But we need to know and we need to get moving. And um, I think the fan group at Everton have sent a very good letter to the Premier League saying that, you know, you've taken us to these deep levels of, uh, of uncertainty through your inaction. And uh, I'm, I've got to say, this is an unusual case. And the dithering that's gone on is, is unbelievable. Uh, is the fan group's feeling, and, and, and fans generally, Keith, there's a general sense that they just want 777 to get done now? Is it just it needs to get over the line and actually the new owners are in? Or is it that they're not happy and they would like somebody else to potentially step in? My feeling at the moment, from what I'm seeing from the fan groups and the fans I speak to, is that they're not keen on 777, but they do want a decision. They hope that 777 would then have to bring in other stronger partners if they did get it. Uh, but if they not, let's make a decision, move on. And we do believe that there are people out there who would still be interested in taking on Everton. And uh, let's let's hope that's the case. I mean, as the weeks roll by, Keith, every week is getting close to the summer transfer window. So that $1 million question, when do we anticipate this to be done or announced? Or equally, if there are new buys to come in, will that be completed pre-summer transfer window? Well, you know, I go back to the time when Richard Masters was in the House of Commons at the Select Committee with Rick Perry. And he said then that he thought it would take a couple of weeks uh, or maybe three weeks to, uh, to get finalised. That was back middle of February. Here we are now, middle of April, and uh, still no decision on this, and no public statement from the Premier League as to what those conditions were. They've been leaked, and I'm pretty sure that, that leaking is pretty accurate, but still, we don't know for sure that is the case, and we don't know if there's a timeline for them to meet them. So I don't know if, they're tr if 777 are trying to do deals behind the scenes to get stronger partners with them. That's what it would seem to, me, to be to me. So... But again, that's that's tying Everton's hands behind their back because apparently they can't speak to new people until the 777 deal is either rejected or approved. So we're stuck in this whole catch-22 situation again. Uh, meanwhile, there is no strong leadership at the executive level in Everton, no, no chief executive at present, just an interim chief executive. And so you know, it's going to be very hard to attract high-quality and high-caliber staff to come into the club until these sort of things are resolved. So 
it's having all these unintended consequences, which is a favourite Premier League saying this week. Apparently, they're blaming the. Uh, they're saying don't go for the Premier for the football regulator because it will have unintended consequences. Well, I'm seeing unintended consequences from the Premier League themselves, and uh, that's a big issue. If you had to sum up Keith in one word, we'll take the second point deduction and potential appeal, the third potential point deduction and appeal, 777 going on, all of these different issues. What's the What would the one-word summary be for, for Everton, Evertonians across, the, yeah, across your fan base? Well, <laughs> I don't think I can say it uh, <laughs> in, in public. The, the antagonism and the animosity towards the Premier League has been an all-time high. Although people are starting to get perhaps bored with the, the whole thing and getting worn down by it, I still see a resilience in the Everton fan base to fight this through. What shouldn't be ignored, though, also is the cost factor again. I mean, you know, it's all right saying we're going to appeal this, we're going to appeal that, and there's a third hearing coming up, etc. That all costs a lot, a lot of money for the club. And it doesn't help in sustainability, which is what this rule was supposed to be about. 